welcome. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you. Hello, mate. Harry, how are you? Not bad. Not fly. Good to see you guys, yes. What's the menu, Danny? Uh, it is um, seared beef, fish with uh, tomato salsa and bread Fish. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, what's it called? Brill. Brill, yeah. Brill fish. Meet tonight's brigade, McFly. Heading the lineup of this band of brothers is keen home cook Tom. He'll be cooking with pizza lover Harry and Dougie, the weakest cook in the group. Joining them in the kitchen is Danny, the joker of the pack. Let's see how funny he finds being in my kitchen. Tonight, there's no support act. These boys will have to crank it up in the kitchen if they're to get out a three-course dinner for 50 diners. Time for starter, a seared beef salad with pickled ginger. This is a very um, lean, uh, lightly marbled uh, piece of beef. It's uh, quite sweet, and the herbs help to counteract that, so it's a really nice combination. A crushed coriander, salt, pepper, roll that around. The coriander and cumin, really nice combination. Quite a strong sort of bitter flavour. The reason why we um, sear these off in the pan is to reduce the heat in the spices, OK? Has to be very careful, yeah? 30 seconds. As I tilt the pan, it's just sort of rolling around. Sesame seeds at the end, into the seeds, and again, let the tongs do all the work. Beef sits there, vinaigrette, soy, okay, rice wine vinegar, nice. Peanut oils. No matter what order that goes in, is it? it can go in Doesn't matter, because we're going to mix it up. This is a pickled ginger. It's a really nice way of cutting through the richness of the beef and give it a nice, vibrant kick. Okay, cress. It's very light and dainty, yeah? Lightly, dress. And just, just spread these out. Nice big slices of beef. We we'll put the base on the bottom to give it a little bit of height. Mix up the vinaigrette and then look, bang, just over. Okay, so there's three little crucial steps. Right, have a little taste. Just go for it. It's so nice. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Right, Tom and Danny, you're going to work over there. Okay. Yeah. Harry and Dougie, yeah, yeah. you're uh, on here. Have all you guys got girlfriends? Yes. So who's going to lose the virginity first? <laughs> Right, McFly. Yes? Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, this is no rehearsal. This is it. OK, on order. Four covers, table ten. McFly, four beef, four brill, four pancakes. Ooh. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, yes. chef. <laughs> is that what happens uh, when you're on stage and well, one starts and three of you dribble behind? <laughs> like, guys, Harry, seriously? Yes, chef. Yes, 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 chef. That's better. Off we go. Right, on order. Four covers, table six, four beef, four brill, four pancakes. Yes, chef. Yes, yes chef. Fucking <laughs> Dougie, louder. Mate, yes, uh, chef. Beef in the pan, Dougie. Yes. Good. Sesame seeds on there. Right, salad, where is it, Danny? Let's My go. Head, yeah? Taste back in Everything, water. Yeah. Who's dressing the salad? Yeah. Good. Into the plate and just push around, almost like you're making a little nest. Yeah. yeah. You there, there you go, down, and then from there, round. Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. good. Right, guys. Would you pay for that? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Good. Table six, please. Salad back in the fridge. And Doug. Yeah. Yeah? Four more away now, quick. Okay, go, go, go. In a couple of months' time, we'll be eating Janet's veal. I'm in charge of the cooking and the drinks. I'm looking for the perfect drink to serve with the veal that Janet's rearing for the F-word restaurant. But rather than wine, I'm going for a drink that's come back into fashion in a big way. Beer. And I want to brew my own. But first, I've got to taste a variety of beers to work out which flavours complement the delicate taste of Janet's veal. I've come to the Marquess Tavern in North London to meet Will Beckett, an expert in matching gourmet beers with food. Will, how are you? Good, thanks, Gordon. Good to see you. Can you? Beer is the new wine? That's bullshit. Come on. Huh? No, no, absolutely not. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to replace wine, but uh, beer's got the whole range of flavour that, that wine can do, and it's just as good with food. I'm going to cook some veal so I can get the best possible match. A little sprig of rosemary, a little uh, touch of garlic. Finding the right beer to drink with veal is going to be tough. Anything too strong or too bitter will overwhelm the delicate flavours of the meat. I need something smooth, not too gassy, and something which doesn't have a strong aftertaste. Out. And there's yours. There we are. Thank you very much. Excellent. Right, here we go. A little taste of veal, right? Mm. It's delicate. It's yep. tasty. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for something that can combine those flavours. Classic British beer, McDonald's favourite. Well, she's a bloke anyway. Oh, shit. That's not right for you, is it? This is one of my favourite beers. Really, really nice, quite a multi flavour. Colour-wise, looks nice. Smells quite sweet. See, initially, it's nice, creamy, light. 
but then there's an aftertaste. No, it's a stout, so it's, uh, it's... Cheers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the ones I thought you'd like. I've got some ones I don't think you'd like. Shit. Try this one. See, that's not too bad. It's got quite a strong aftertaste. Trying to eat food with that level of bitterness at the back of your mouth as well. It's a Scottish beer aged in oak barrels. You get kind of vanilla and caramel on the nose. You get that bit more you sweetness. Can, you can smell the caramel on that. Yeah. That there's no aftertaste. There's no bitterness. Honestly, I mean, how hard is that going to be to replicate that? The the key to this kind of beer is the aging process. You need to find those those kind of barrels. That is delicious. It is. I honestly didn't think we'd ever find that. You know that. We've done it. Cheers. Ah. Uh, Dougie, I don't want that sweat pissing on my beef, OK? Fucking hell, look at that. Do you sweat on stage like this? Oh, I sweat like this Seriously? on stage, yeah. Jesus Christ. Dougie, keep your pan yeah. Yeah, in the middle of the stove. You're okay, not going to get anything cooked there. OK. So, um, we want... Um, right, come on. <laughs> How do I do it so my fingers don't burn when I go near it? Fucking hell. Hold that away from there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then like that. Just okay. more in the pan. Whilst I'm concerned you're getting uh, hot and bothered and sweaty, yep. yeah, keep the fucking pan in the middle of the stove. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you. Tom and Danny, yeah? The chef. Yes, That's good, yeah? Keep it up. Dougie? Yes. I need to speed up a little bit, yes? Okay. Uh, Danny, <laughs> Danny. It's very nice, chef. yes? Go, yes, please, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, yes. go. Tabby 11. Very good. Let's go. Oh, no. <laughs> Harry, can you stop eating, please? It looks so bad in front of the customers, yeah? Okay. When they're standing there, fucking looking at me, gawping at you, and you're eating their not, they get pissed off, yeah? Take it seriously. Table 12, yes? Hey, well done, yes? Didn't think we were going to get there, you know that. Yeah. Harry was eating more than the customers. Well, I'm hoping, of course, that all 50 want to pay for the fucking starters. Right. Yeah? Job, Stay down. Yeah, we'll get set up for the next course, yes? <laughs> Dan, did you enjoy the starter? Yeah, it's very good. good. Yes? I was vegetarian. Right, and welcome I've back. I've slowly, <laughs> <laughs> I've slowly started eating each meat, and uh, that was the first time I'd eaten beef, and nice. it was absolutely delicious. I'm sure you'd agree a lot better than the plate of lentils, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, empty plates everywhere. It's always a good sign, yes? Yeah? <laughs> the beef was really good. It was really complimented by the sesame seeds and all the flavours and the oil. It was lovely. It was really nice. Doggy, out of 50, how many is going to pay? I think 35. What, you think you sweated in 35 dishes? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's find out. Damn. The number of people paying for the starter is 49 out of 50. Yay! Yay! Who was it? Where is she? Stand up. <laughs> One individual. I don't know why you're eating. <laughs> say that again. The salad was sloppy. What can I say? Oh. And what about the beef? The beef was the beef was nicely cooked, but there was too much dressing over uh, it. Are you related to Janet Street Porter? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Next on the menu. In my mission to get the nation eating healthily, I tackle a man who wants to run a marathon but is more interested in eating Snickers. Have you ever seen the movie Run, Fat Boy, Run? The brigade make a meal of the main course. I'm fucking doing everything. Yeah, you're doing fuck all. And I get ready to roll out my home brew for the F-word restaurant. Ah! <laughs> oh, hold a minute. Does that smell nice and sweet? Yeah. Right, welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course, Herb Crusted Brill in shallots, tomato. Herb Crusted Fillets of Cornish Brill. This is a very sweet, delicate fish, packed with flavour, but very robust in texture. Salt. Pepper. Olive oil. Hot pan. We want to colour the fish, not boil it. One minute each side. Take it out of the pan onto a tray. And now we're going to make a really quick tomato and basil salsa. Tomatoes. Shallots. And you can hear the tomatoes roasting in the flavour of the fish. Basil. Cool. And now for the exciting part. Bread. Parsley, parmesan. It helps stick the crust together and, more importantly, gives it a really nice colour. Blitz. That smells like Provence. Beautiful. Salsa. Be quite generous 
on top of the grill. Really pack the breadcrumbs on there. Bake six minutes. That is beautiful. Olive oil, balsamic vinegar, basil, herb crusted fillets of brill with tomato salsa. Done. Right, all tonight's recipes on the website, so log on and get in the kitchen. Well, Harry, Harry, you're on fire. You're on fire. Harry. Oh, fuck. Put the pen down. <laughs> yeah, give me that. Fuck it, no. Fuck's sake. Let's go, guys. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night. Right, Tom. Yep. In the early days, yes, when you all used to live together in a big, one big house, who's done the cooking then? Uh, pizza Gogo. Who? We lived off pizza for about. Somebody a year. must have cooked. <laughs> Danny. We never switched on our oven. You're off there. You can probably wait on through that. I put on about two stone in the first year now. <laughs> Very nice. What about spare potatoes? No, leave them over. It's always best to have one extra. Clean yeah, plates. Do we use the. Um... Quick, Tom. Very nice, yeah? What am I doing now, dude? Beautiful. Go, please. Yeah, yeah, go. Just smile and do. Yeah, we just wipe off your top cloth. Okay. Tom, come here. Yeah, you happy with that, yes? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yes, you happy yeah. with that? Yes, yeah. That's lovely. Hey, fucking slow, but nice. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six tables to go, yeah? Come on. Tom, yes, you're taking this out. Yeah, it's table nine. Very, very nice. Table nine. Yeah, the lady good. didn't want to pay for the starter. Ready? No, that's fine. Uh, chef. That's fine. Go, please, yeah? Go. Yep, yeah? yeah, good. Should yep. be out. Yep. Come on, let's go. Uh, right, clear down. Clear down. Down. Guys, I've got four uh, tables wait, left. Wait. Yes. There you go. Firstly, <laughs> delivering your. Um, <laughs> you hope you like Thank it. You. We didn't spit in it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. Cheers. Health eating is a marathon, not a sprint. The London Marathon is the moment when a nation of couch potatoes finally gets off its ass and tries to run off the flab. It's a grueling run, and to have any hope of finishing, a good healthy diet is crucial. Preparing for the London Marathon is bloody hard work. I should know. I've done eight myself. I've come to South London to help a guy who's been training for the marathon but not lost any weight. In the mornings, I'd have a bacon and egg sandwich. During the day, I'm snacking at chocolates and things like that. I love Thai takeaways. They're my favourite. Lovely. Thank you very much. My friends have been taking the piss out of me quite heavily for doing the marathon, so I really would like some tips from Gordon. With only two weeks to go, he should be in bloody good shape. Morning, Ben. How good. are you feeling? Yeah, good. Two weeks to go. Indeed. Ready? Yep. Jump. <laughs> You're not ready. <laughs> First one? Yes, indeed. Always the hardest. I trust you've been eating well? Um, not as well as I should be. You've obviously shed some weight since you've started training? Not much. Ready? None. You're doing all this training, yeah, and you haven't lost weight. That's yeah. basically down to your diet. You're fucked. I'm pretty much fucked, yeah. <laughs> but positive mental attitude, I'll get through yeah, absolutely it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going to quit. Yeah, there so is a big advantage. There must be 72 takeaways along the way, yeah. especially through Isle of Dogs. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yes? Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Have you ever seen the movie Run, Fat Boy, Run? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ben! <laughs> I did uh, two hours before. Yeah. I was fucked, literally. Really? Breathing out my fucking ring. I'm determined to show Ben that healthy food can still be delicious. It might even get him to the finish line. Come on, Ben! Jesus. How is he going to pull this one off? Right, I know you like curries, yeah? yeah. You're a big advocate of curries, yes? Yeah. But did you realise down your street is this beautiful little market here? All a right. Thai market, yes? OK. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to enjoy your favourite food. Asparagus, you know, literally 30 seconds in the pan. Okay. Very healthy as well. Cook it yourself rather than get it from a takeaway. You'll know what's in it and can make sure it's healthy as well as tasty. Some really nice basil. A couple of carrots. The aubergines, they are absolutely delicious. I've never seen them before. Yeah, a combination between the slight bitterness of the aubergine but the texture of a pea. Here's a really nice way of making rice a little bit more exciting, vibrant. We'll steam it with some star anise. Excellent. Right, I recognise this man's face because we've seen him a lot more, yes? Oh, hopefully so. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. That didn't take long, did it? Nope. Quicker than getting a takeaway. I'm here to show Ben that he can enjoy his favourite foods but with less than half the calories. This delicious, yeah, Thai style stir fry, okay. yeah, 400 calories okay. max. Cutting the vegetables. That's half the calories found in a takeaway equivalent. Mm -hmm. And it's packed with all the slow release energy Ben's body needs. And it won't pile on the pounds. Cooking the rice, water. Rice is a great source of carbohydrates which give energy. 
Add the star anise and Thai sweet basil to the rice. OK, with the beef. Fillet of beef. Delicious and lean with virtually no fat. It's also packed with protein. When you can't get hold of beef, chicken the same way is fantastic. What's nice and hot? The secret of a stir fry is having the veg slightly crunchy. Beef in. And where do you study at uni? Uh, Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah. What did you read? Uh, sports science. Brilliant. Sports science. Mm. Ben. Mm. Healthy sports yeah. science. <laughs> Le yeah. Ben. <laughs> beef out. Mix the vegetables and the beef. OK, oyster sauce. Rice wine vinegar, one tablespoon. Soy sauce. Nice. OK, so we've got all those juices from the vegetables and the meat. Vegetables, beef in. Both. That smells amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. Really, really good. Two weeks of this. Yeah. These things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah will be gone. This Thai stir fry will help Ben with his man boobs, and it's so delicious, his flatmates will love it too. Yes. How are we? Good. Uh, good, right. yeah. Great stuff. Thanks very much. Good, thank you. Mm. Tasting? Mm. If I come across you on the marathon, I'm <laughs> fucked. Mm. Okay? Yeah? I want to wish you all the best. I was going to put a spurt in at the beginning. Yeah. Well, put a spurt yeah. in at the beginning. Trust me, by the time you get to cut his out, you'll be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're yeah. too slow, I'll catch you up. We'll see, you we'll see how we get on. <laughs> <laughs> The big day arrives, and fueled by my healthy food, Ben's raring to go. I certainly feel I'm more prepared now than I was uh, a few weeks ago. I've changed my diet, um, and I've also been training a bit more. There he is. The pretty good runner, Gordon. He's uh, run some pretty quick times over the marathon. I wonder if he's getting his diet quite right. Ben safely passed the 20 mile mark, a killer milestone for even the most experienced marathon runner. And congratulations to Gordon Ramsay. He's finally crossing the finish line in uh, around about three hours 45. Not my best time, but an amazing buzz as always. Healthy food doesn't have to be boring food, but uh, I'm starving now, I tell you. Ben comes in at a commendable four hours and 54 minutes. Good lad. <laughs> Guys. Yep. Changing the way I've been eating is, is a big thing, but also doing the marathon has given me a good kick-off, so hopefully I can be a lot healthier, lose a bit more weight, maybe even do it next year. Maybe not. <laughs> Doug, yep. look for four bits of brill the same size. Why? It will Just be fair on other people. Fair on other people. <laughs> OK, now. <laughs> they cook evenly. Oh, Tom, yeah, get no, the six no, fish no, in no, the no, pan. No. Listen to me now. Otherwise, you're going to go down, yeah? And Harry, we're falling behind now, yeah? I've asked for a five, there's not even a fucking pan on. Uh, I know, I'm doing the potatoes, and I'm no. putting that fish. Together! OK, do the fish, you do the fish, you do the fish. No, a pan for the fish! Yes! Yeah. Put it on! All right, all right, all right. You're the shots in the wrong one. Get That's... them out then, quick! <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys! Yeah. OK, now, watch out. Harry. Well, stop, I'm, stop. I'm fucking doing everything. Yeah, you're mate. doing I'm... fuck all. I don't yeah. know what that I'm doing. That is ridiculous. I, say, what I'm I doing. thought you were one talented man. Fuck it. <laughs> out of way, out of the way. <laughs> Same shit, different day. Mate, I'm doing the same. What are you having cold water on the beans for, Tom? <laughs> stop. No. Bang. <laughs> Muck shit. Clear down, yeah? Fuck. <laughs> right, back to beer. I've been searching for the perfect beer to accompany Janet's veal for the F-word restaurant. I eventually found a winner, a beer from Scotland, which I'm going to use as the inspiration for my home brew. There's no aftertaste, there's no bitterness. Go on, Heidi. Beautiful. Expert Dougal Sharp has come down from the Highlands to show me how to brew it in my back garden. And the missus is going to do a fucking nut when she sees the size of this barrel. You know that? She'll love it. Ah. She'll love it. And how many... <laughs> looks a bit like you. Looks so... like you're a bit like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's gone. I'm very excited about this. I mean, it looks like something out of fucking Charlie the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, help Professor Boltfassar. Don't worry. They probably think I'm brewing the kids or something when they're naughty. <laughs> this, this is the key thing. 90% of the flavour of our beer right. is from this barrel. Bourbon has been in the barrel first. Right. Uh, and it takes out flavours that you wouldn't want in beer. Smell that. Uh, you got a little yeah. bit of citrusy yeah. note in there. Yeah. That is so amazing. Sweet. Creamy. Slightly creamy and slightly apricotty. Oh, My brew will eventually rest in the barrel for 30 days 
and it will take on the smooth vanilla characters of the oak and bourbon. So we've got a tank of water at 80. 80 degrees. Yep, we're going to mix that with these grains in this right. vessel. That's mashing. The first thing Dougal instructs me to do is add salt to the hot water, then add malt, roasted barley and wheat malt. Incredible. I mean, it's like a huge vat of porridge. So, we've got mash. We yeah. just need to cover it up, leave it for an hour. Cup of tea. Sounds good. Yeah. After an hour, we are left with the wort, which is a sweet water flavoured by the grains. Super sweet. Great. That is incredible. That's fantastic. Ah. That is absolutely incredible. An hour. Next, we mix in the first batch of hops, which will add flavour, aroma and a touch of bitterness to balance the sweetness of the malt. You have a smell there. Completely unexpected smell. That's incredible. It's a bit like a Pinot Grigio, this one. It's a bit earthy. Yeah. Uh, it's got a little bit of citrus character, and it's your classic sort of British hop. This mixture boils for an hour before we add some final hops for flavour. Jack arrives home just in time to give us a hand. Do you play football today, rugby today, drink any beers today? Um, All of the above, surely. What? 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 <laughs> Bullshit, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hold on a minute. Does that smell nice and sweet? Yeah. Have a smell of that one in there. You reach. Put your finger in there and just see how black it is. It gets burnt inside. Mm. Huh? A little wall paint. <laughs> <laughs> right, you ready to put these in? Yeah. In goes the second batch of hops. It's a bit like adding herbs to food. It's like a witch's potion when you stir it. A around. witch's potion? Excuse me. Hey, this is your hey. dad's very own beer. Hops. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'll do the thing we just pretended. That's right. So, do me a favour, yeah? Hop it. Homework. <laughs> now! The final step is to pump the mixture into the fermenter, where we add live yeast, which turns the sugars in the malt into alcohol. So, six to eight days in this. Yeah, we're going to need to let it settle out a little bit, yeah. then we'll transfer it to the oak, and then it's just au naturel. Six weeks from now, it will be ready to drink. Excellent. Shall we bless the brew? Shall we bless the brew? How do you bless it up north? <laughs> oh, really? Let's hope this fucking works. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. We've done it. That's good enough. <laughs> How are we? Nice to see you. How's the brew? Uh, we've never heard of it, but it was fantastic. Oh, really? It was the loveliest fish I've ever tasted, actually. Nice. Yeah. An idea of the tomato salsa was to sort of bake Perfect. it. A nice fresh tomato fondue over yeah. the grill, which acts as a bit of a sauce. But you can still taste the fish, which was nice. Beautiful. Yeah. You're going to pay? Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. I really, really enjoyed the main course, actually. I particularly... I mean, you wouldn't have thought that, like, fish and mint and shallots would all go together because they're quite different flavours. I actually thought they combined really well to make a really nice, um, really nice dish. OK, Jose, let's go. How yeah. well do you think we did? I'm praying for 25 to 30. 25 to 30. The results are... 35 out of 50, not bad, yeah, but not very good. It's no longer muck shit, it's muck mediocre, yes? It was uh, tough to concentrate, obviously, with uh, Gordon shouting and stuff, but you kind of get used to it. Now I'm used to it and relaxed now in the kitchen atmosphere, which is good. Well, one thing's cooking, you've got to be putting the other one on, and it's just nuts, but um, hopefully we'll, we'll get it done for the dessert. Next on the menu, has the mad cow finally cracked? Disgusting. Scientist turned comedian Ben Miller struggles to get a reaction. I think they can nucleate the uh, they can nucleate your, your sponge. Oh shit, are you still here? <laughs> and I find out who's the biggest tosser in McFly. Oh, oh that was Right, welcome back to the effort. Now, time for the recipe challenge, and tonight's competitor is comedian Ben Miller. Excited? Very Ready? excited. What are you making? Psyched, even. Psyched? Yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> what are you making? Victoria sponge. Oh, please. The reason I chose the sponge is I thought it might be your weak point. It is my weak point. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm maybe Very I'm clever. This is a, an old family recipe that actually came from my wife's grandmother. Here's the good news, yeah? All our blind that? tasters are from the WI. Yeah, they're going to love my old old-fashioned sponge. Right, Ben's making a traditional Victoria sponge, which is a fucking worry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a Swiss roll. I'm going to use fresh vanilla seeds, eggs, sugar, whisk them up, fold in the flour, bake it, roll it, line it with some jam, a little bit of uh, creme de framboise, and then mash some fresh raspberries in there and win! 
What's in there? I've got all my stuff. I've you got, got my stuff. such a pro. I'm not leaving I... anything to chance as well, as I thought you were going to stitch me up. You are going to give me some shit equipment or something. Yeah. Ben. As you can see, quite lightweight, anodized. You very good at heat mixer. Mixer. Got a hand mixer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Am my ones good enough for you? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have been testing them. Is that your... That's my so, thermometer. Honestly, that's your thermometer. It was five degrees out. If that's reading 150, this is 155. So preparation is everything. You're weighing your eggs now as well. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> You're such a buffet. You're right. I am a scientist. And I think this is also why I thought a baking might be to my strength. Whatever the weight of the eggs is, I use exactly the same weight of flour, caster sugar and butter. So right. you're using an essence. Smell yeah. that. Fresh vanilla. Yeah, it's Madagascar. Fantastic. No, I have used, I have cooked with vanilla pods, but I think... Sit. Why not? Well, well, I find them a little bit sticky, and I think they can nucleate the, uh, They can nucleate your, your sponge. You sound you? like fucking Hester Blumenthal. <laughs> nucleate my sponge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Holy crap. Nucleating particles are, um, particles that, um, cause anisotropy in a, in a fluid. So, say, for example, if you want to make a crystal... It's oh, shit, are you still here? Oh, fuck, It's sorry. like a child in the classroom. <laughs> How much have you been practising? A couple of evenings this week, just <laughs> just, um, just working on this, this one recipe. You know how competitive I am. Yeah. yeah. You know that, yes? Yeah. yeah. I clearly hope you seriously fuck this up. My hand is shaking. Look at my yeah, hand. I'm watching like you this. now. It's extraordinary. Like a from Italian to comedians <laughs> struggling over a fucking sponge. <laughs> ben, get a grip, man. <laughs> huh? I really want to win, man. My uh, electricity, you okay with that, yes? Yeah. Okay, good. It's I've just regulation, 240 recently. volts, 13 amps, yeah. Let's yeah. 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 whisk away, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Whole eggs in, vanilla pot in there as well, and sugar in. I'm going to whisk it up into a really nice, light, creamy texture. Now creaming up the uh, butter and the cast of sugar. I want to get it almost white. So what did you do before you got into comedy? I was a physicist. Oh. No wonder you're so meticulous the way you're out. Yeah, no, absolutely. I am Where did you read? Um, at, at Cambridge. Cambridge. And I, and I stayed on, I did a PhD there as well. Oh, wow. In fact, recently, there's a lot of happening in physics. Uh-huh. Because they're building this particle accelerator in CERN, in Switzerland. Have you heard about this? It's an amazing experiment. It's like a 27-kilometre track that they fire particles around, collide them into one another, and they're going to recreate the Big Bang. They're looking for something called the Higgs particle. Which they also call the God Particle, which they think... Now, Ben, seriously, have you got any jokes? Any jokes? <laughs> 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 I'm a chef! <laughs> You're still creaming? Fuck it, I'm going to cream some more. It's the fresh vanilla. It's causing you problems. It... <laughs> uh, right, I've got mine to a really nice, thick Savion now, OK? And that is light and aerated, with the vanilla running through. I'm going to fold in the flour, and then I'm going to be ready for the oven. I cream the butter and sugar together, then I add in my eggs, and uh, the eggs have got the a bit, of vi bit of vanilla essence I'm using, rather than the, uh, I think, possibly nucleating <laughs> vanilla pods. I'm just folding in this flour, um, trying to do as little mixing as possible at this last stage. So Ben's using uh, classic cake tins. I'm using a tray because I'm going to turn this into the most amazing Swiss roll. <laughs> it's going to come out of the oven. I'm going to line it with jam, <laughs> almonds, crushed raspberries. I'm good I'm, to go. Are, they, are you good to go? Yeah. Thank God for that. So both sponges are in the oven. Yes, we come back. Yep. And then Ben loses. <laughs> <laughs> Nice smooth paste, yes? Something with no lumps in there, yeah? Right, time for the desserts. Souffle pancakes with the rhubarb compote. Come on, Tom, put some fucking muscle into it. Souffle pancakes with the rhubarb compote. First, the pancake mix. Flour. Egg yolks. Sugar. Milk. Beet. And what we're looking for is a really nice, smooth, textured pancake. And now, our egg whites. Sugar. Whisk. Mix. The secret now is just really folding it in gently. Look, that nice smooth texture. Compote. Rhubarb, vanilla, ginger, hot pan, butter, sugar. The sugar stops the rhubarb from becoming really tart. Lemon, water. Of the skin has started to really colour into this really nice soft rhubarb compote. Simmer, pancakes, hot pan, butter. A 
one flip. Ice and sugar. The most amazing, delicious pancake. Souffle pancakes, rhubarb compote. Done. Compote to heat up. Yep. Spoon in there. Put a wooden spoon in there so it doesn't burn. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Right, Tom. In all seriousness now, is it true? Every time you go to the swimming pool, you have a piss in it. <laughs> that oh, is true. That is true. Tom, for God's sake, man. Right, roll it round. <laughs> right, back on. He also cries at Disney films. Oh. There's a way you're picking on me. <laughs> but, but you cry at Disney films. What? Little Mermaid. Nice. Free Willy. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Flip it to the end. Flip, flip, flip. Oh, there. Yeah. Watch. Uh, push away. And round. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Come on, Danny. Okay, ready for the mix, yeah? No. So that's the perfect amount. Hold it to the edge there. Yeah, down. And yep. then around. Bang. Right. Yeah. Oh, ice and sugar. Good boy. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Come on, guys. Come on, Harry. I want this to fucking work. Okay. Yeah, Burn good. Up. Go, please. Let's go. That's enough. Guys, four tables of four, one table of six. Let's go. 22 pancakes left. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right. Oh. Whoa, oh. shit, careful. Fucking hell, what happened? A double flip. Yeah, no, fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Uh, right. Off. Too much mix. Less mix in there, guys. Yeah. Not so much mix in the pans. They cook quicker, Danny. The yeah, chef. and when we flip them, they don't piss everywhere. Right. Try, try, try. Go on, try, try. Go on. Ready for a toss? Yeah, go on then. Up. Whoa. Good man. Hey, that's spot on. Very good. Whoa, um, sweet one. Nice. Huh? How did you guys meet? Um, I met Tom uh, in Manchester, actually, because Tom failed to get into Busted, you know that? You failed to get into Busted? Yeah. So you joined McFly? Oh, you started, started McFly. Talk about fade, yes? Yeah, absolutely. Fucking brilliant. It feels like we made about a thousand. I don't know, we fucked them. Oh! oh 360! Double. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, Dan, let's do double figures now, yeah? Two pounds on each. Tom, two pounds on each, let's go. Come on, Doug. Keep it in the pan. Um, let's go. Yes? Yeah. Excellent. Woo. Stop. That was hard. Here's the bird with the big mouth and Janet Street Porter. Jamie and Hugh have been banging on about free-range birds <coughs> and intensive farming, <coughs> but neither of them have mentioned the healthiest bird of all. Ostrich. It's healthy and delicious, but do people actually want to eat it? No. 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 You normally just see them in the zoos and you think they're meant to be there. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound normal. This tasty meat is a mystery to us Brits. What does it taste like? Is it, is it like duck or anything like that? There are 35 ostrich farms in the UK, but no supermarkets are selling their meat. I've come to Kesey Farm in the Scottish Borders to see if we're missing out on something huge. Hi, Walter. Hi, Janet. Walter's been running the family farm for 10 years, supplying meat online and to specialist butchers and restaurants serving ostrich all over the country. Why should I eat ostrich? On the health side, it's low cholesterol, low fat. Ostrich is healthier meat. And out they'll come. I've come as two ostriches are joining the flock. Hello. <laughs> Very elegant. Is this affection? <laughs> they might look funny, but ostrich is the fastest bird on Earth. They can reach 43 miles an hour. They really fly. No, they can't. They can run around and they run in quite a bizarre manner <laughs> with their necks um, straight and their body moves from side to side. <laughs> um... Sounds a bit like me running. <laughs> Everything super-sized. Oh, my word! Even their eggs, with each one the equivalent of 24 regular hen's eggs. Waitrose has started selling ostrich eggs in 19 stores as a trial. The shell on them seems incredibly hard. It's very strong. You should be able to stand on it. <laughs> All right, if I stand on this egg and it breaks, I don't want Gordon to call me a fat old cow. Walter, are you sure? Can I have the other one? Right, hold on. Ah! Right, hold on. Right, OK, you can step away now. Ah! <laughs> oh, no, it's disgusting! <laughs> I can't wait to find out what these weird birds taste like. Now the neck's off, it just looks like 
huge turkey, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it is. Food. With 28 kilos of meat, these big birds could feed over 100 people for dinner. So this is the fillet. Um, so why don't we cut your steak and then you can try and see what you think. OK. Walter's Aussie wife, Di, is no stranger to ostrich. And for once, she's shunning the barbie in favour of a good old-fashioned British hob. Ostrich is really good at taking on fruit flavours. Um, we often just have it with a bit of, you know, red wine reduction or something like that. Ostrich cooks twice as fast as chicken, lamb and beef. It's full of iron whilst being extremely low in fat, so it won't give you a big behind. You've got to be careful not to overcook it. That's actually the golden rule with ostrich. I want mine rare. Rare, OK. So you can see it's just browning up. All so right, I don't want mine cooked anymore. OK, that. well, let's stick it on the plate. I only like steak rare. I can't see the point of turning it into a finger. So now I just stick a bit of butter and pop in your berries, some nice blackberries or something like that. A nice bit of plonk. Like that. And that's ready to go. It's nice and rare. Oh, yeah, this is my rare steak. Okay. Get stuck in. Oh, it tastes great. It's it just... doesn't taste that gamey. It's an incredibly tender red meat with a subtle flavour. I can't believe people aren't queuing up to eat this delicious, healthy meat. If only people tried ostrich, they'd love it. So I've got a plan. Right, who's first? The Janet Street Porter Ostrich Burger. Oh, fuck, it's boiling. <laughs> Ostrich burger, please. An ostrich. I bet you thought you'd never say those words. Tell me what you think. We've got much more meat in them than a regular hamburger. Oh, look at the size of that. <laughs> well, Do you like it? What does it like taste it? like? It just tastes a bit like pork. It's coming from down the road. All right. No, it is. It's really nice. It's got a nutty, nutty flavour. I would, I would, I would even go back and have another now. <laughs> She wants a second one. The queue's enormous. The people of Berwick-on-Tweed would happily buy ostrich burgers if they could get their hands on them. Well, my ostrich burgers have proved to be a smash hit with the people of Berwick-on-Tweed. They loved it. Hello, my darling. Good to see you well. Yes. Mmm, you look great. Now, what are you thought about this week? What is it? Ostrich meat. Oh. It's fantastic meat. Yeah. It's really high in iron, mm. low in fat, mm -hmm. and low in cholesterol. That's incredibly tender. Isn't you know it that. fantastic? Mm. It's free range, mm -hmm. organic, and if you want to eat red meat, that's a brilliant alternative. Yep. When you went to the ostrich farm, did you feel at home with all those long-legged birds? I did not, Gordon. No, no, but they're quite fascinating characters, aren't they? They're individual. They are, but I have got nothing in common with an ostrich. No, no, Thank uh, you, no, Gordon. No, 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 but they're pretty gobby, aren't they? They They've got big mouths. They only make sounds okay. when they're shagging. <laughs> Trust you to know that. That's a fascinating Seriously. fact. So what do you do? Put a pillow in your mouth? Gordon, <laughs> I've got nothing in common with us because okay. I'm not going to peck you. OK. <laughs> but look, see okay. that egg you're holding? That yes. is the largest edible egg. I'd like you to stand on it. Oh, come on. I want to see if you're as heavy yeah, as I, I think you are. I know I... you're always going on about your bloody nine marathons. They tricked me into standing on this egg. I heard you stood on one. And it was impossible for anyone to smash one, but however, Janet, you managed. Come on. So here's, here's the weird thing, OK? A 350-pound ostrich, OK? OK, can sit on one without smashing it. Along comes Janet, at home with her ancestors, and... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> have you, seriously, I... OK? Have you, have you honestly put a few pounds on your old age? Ready? No, I haven't. Right, here we go. 15 stone. You just Gordon. ruined my fucking shoes, for God's <laughs> sake, woman. Look, your very own hard-boiled ostrich egg with your very own soldiers. Look, can you imagine taking that to bed in the morning? Look. Uh, uh, <laughs> now have a little donk. <laughs> I mean, they are very rich, aren't they? Mm. Uh, now, um, I've heard that it's very good for arthritis. Yeah, ostrich oil, in terms of, you know... How massage. would I know I haven't got arthritis? No, if you're building up to one of your jokes no, about my age... The question I'm leading it. to... Do you know what? Every <laughs> week you mention the fact <laughs> that I'm a pensioner. People in Britain think I look you're fucking a, great... You're a benchmark for a pensioner. I'll take now, my Now, really good to see you, Thanks OK? See you next food, week. Thanks for the food, Gordon. Yeah, give my love to Elton and David, yes? Thank you.
Next on the menu, will the Women's Institute help Ben Miller rise to the top in the recipe challenge? Getting in a position to nuclear <laughs> Mr. Miller. <laughs> and McFly find out what the diners made of their pancakes. The amount of customers that have agreed, yeah, to pay is... Right, welcome back to the F Word. Time for the results of the recipe challenge, and Ben Miller is about to lose. I have crushed my raspberries with some cream, fresh vanilla, lined the sponge with a little bit of um, flaked toasted almonds, and look at that. Who needs a fucking tin, Delia? <laughs> Must say, very pleased with the texture. There, my son. We have a lark. <laughs> ah, fucking hell, look at that. <laughs> However, I'm getting in a position to nuclear <laughs> Mr. Miller. <laughs> uh, what are you put in the middle of yours? I'll go for jam. <laughs> I've got a nice cream here with a little bit of vanilla and a um, little bit of sugar. Dust mine with ice and sugar. I like to do this little comparison. Uh, ben, yours does look rather so does delicious. Yours. Yours looks yeah, fantastic too. Josie. Off you go. Good luck. Yes. Good luck, yeah. It looks yeah, lovely. Fabulous. Thank right, you. Come yeah. back with the good news. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> obviously, there's only one winner. Fuck off. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. The first plate. Yes. You think, hmm, quite a surprise. Mm. Mm. <laughs> a little very pink. Right, for my liking. <laughs> yes. There are some aftertones with that. Okay. <laughs> Do the squeeze test. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That looks nice yeah. and soft. Yeah. Nice cream. Mm. I um, that's the one I'd finished. Excellent. This is my favourite bit. I find out I've won. Right, Jose, let's go. <laughs> Give me the results. Now, did they enjoy them both? Obviously not. They did. It was very close, actually. Very close, right. Very close. What? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it was actually Ben. Oh, oh get wow. out! <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off, will you? Get out here, you <laughs> Belgium little fucking <laughs> gremlin. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> What's the score? 4-1. Oh, oh, get out of here. Oh, 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 Are they all Delia cool. Smith sisters? <laughs> and what do they say? Well, they actually like the flavour uh, of the Swiss roll, yeah. but more the classicness of the cake. It took the two hours in the fucking oven. 4-1. <laughs> <Four, one. Four, laughs> oh, I've got a present for you. I'm really sorry, but <laughs> read that. Uh, please follow instructions carefully. I will. Thank Unbelievable. You. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Promise real, you won't come real, back. Really. Look I at promise. you, you're back. Look like a fucking gas man. <laughs> 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 you <laughs> nucleating fucker. <laughs> My dessert was really good, and the pancake was just the right thickness, and I think the rhubarb was just at the right level of tartness. It wasn't too sweet, and it went really well with the ice cream. The pancakes are probably not something I'd normally order because I'm not that keen on rhubarb. I'd expect it to be. Uh, a little bit stringy and maybe sour or something like that, but it was actually really, really nice, really sweet. I really enjoyed my pancakes. I thought that the pancake was nice and spongy, um, and the tartness of the rhubarb worked really well with the sweetness of the ice cream, so it was a really good combination. OK, results for desserts, yes? How well do you think you've done? Uh, the dessert, I think we did pretty good. Yes, let's go. Customers happy? Very. Yes? Enjoy the desserts? Some of them. Some of them? Uh, that I don't like the sound of. OK, the amount of customers that have agreed, yeah, to pay is... Oh, damn! Damn, that is a big kick in the bollocks. 31 out of 50. What? Why? We had the size of the uh, pancake. Too small? Too big. Too much food? Too much food. They complained about the size of the portions. Yeah. For five pounds? Oh, my God! I'm not impressed. Right, OK. That's like disappointing, yeah? Yeah, so I, was I thought we would on that. So, the total for tonight is 115 out of 150. <laughs> we wanted to win. Yeah, I know what you wanted to win. Uh, well. It was a great start. It was a great start. I deserve You can so well leave the, the F-word restaurant with your heads up high, yes? <laughs> right, do me one more favour, yes? Yeah. Well, fuck off out of here, <laughs> yes? yes? Get out of here, yeah? Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Open those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, the fly! Damn, 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 damn. On the menu next week, I split hairs with the mouth of Manchester. What's with your haircut? Come, Come on, get off your leaf. You've got fucking yours. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you've been electrocuted, you fucker. Get a move on, man!
arms and move your arse, you lazy little fuck off. The Royal Marines teach me a lesson I'll never forget. That has to be the hardest course I've ever been on, ever. From marathons to double marathons, you name it. And All Saints and their mums are my family brigade. Can Liam cook? Yeah, he can, actually. Yeah. Can he cook better than Robbie? Well, he doesn't eat pies, put it that he doesn't way. Eat pies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to eat here, visit the F Word website. See you next week. Don't be late for your table. At first, we were just so confused in what order, because you have to get used to it, and that's, that's what I found hard. Getting used to it, getting a little routine going. It takes a lot of concentration. Um, you know, to make sure that you don't burn yourself or that you've got to put the pan on while that's doing that. And it's, just, it's quite hard, but it's good fun. My feet hurt. I want to sit down. I burnt, I surrendered, like, burnt all the hair up here. But never mind. It's for the love of cooking.